Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today I am going to be sharing with you five massively iconic Casio watches, all under fifty dollars. Uh, some of them, undoubtedly, you would have heard of before. Uh, a few are personal favorites in my own collection. Now, of course, before I get into this video, I'll do a very quick wristwatch check. If this thing will focus, there we go. Yeah, it's subby. I've decided to wear it all week long just to really enjoy it and I've got it on the Valor NATO strap. If you're not familiar with the uh, the reasons behind these colors, have a look at my website. Um, so yeah, really enjoying it. And uh, yeah, I think uh, my, <laughs> my visit to Japan will have to wait a little while longer. Yeah, dear old subby. Anyway, yeah, so I've decided to wear it all week. A little bit of background on Casio, if you're not familiar, I, I can't imagine <laughs> you, would, you would not know of this incredible company. So they are from Japan. They were founded in Tokyo by Kazuo Kasio, and this was all the way back in 1946. Um, and they are massively, massively important because in 1957, they released the world's first fully electronic compact calculator. It was this expertise and um, masterful speciality in engineering that uh, they then went on to manufacture uh, watches, of course, clocks, uh, digital cameras, electronic musical instruments, mobile phones, etc., etc. And they're hugely, hugely successful. So today we're discussing five watches and they are all under $50. I'll try and include some links down below. So let's start with the first watch, an absolute <laughs> undeniable icon. And yes, it's the data bank, uh, the calculator watch. So this is the CA 53W. So the story actually starts with Pulsar, then uh, formerly part of the Hamilton Watch Company. They released the Pulsar Calculator Watch, first released in 1975. Now this was an entirely different affair because it was aimed at a luxury market. It was, uh, I believe there was even a version in 18 karat uh, solid gold and sold for about $4,000. Now that at, you know, in the 70s is quite a considerable amount and was available at uh, various high-end jewelry stores, including, believe it or not, Tiffany's. Of course, they are highly collectible and uh, one recently sold for a whopping $27,500. Hewitt and Packard uh, soon followed with their version. This was the HP01. I believe that was in 1977. Uh, this was a little bit more affordable and around about $600 to $800. But again, you know, still a lot of money considering um, the time. Now these were very rudimentary, they had LED displays. Now the LCD then came in uh, in the beginning of the 80s and this is when Casio entered the market. It, so it wasn't Casio by any means that pioneered this technology but it definitely was Casio that took it to a, a more mainstream level. In 1984 there was a whole slew of releases from Casio including the TC50 uh, which had a touchscreen calculator, and then that was around about $50. Then there was the CM32, which did metric conversions. Uh, in 1983, there was the CD40, the first to actually be called the data bank. And then slightly later on, uh, the descendants of what we have here today, which is basically kind of precursors to the CA53W. Now, unlike the high-end and, and rather inaccessible um, rudimentary pulsars and Hewitt and Packards, the Casio did not need a stylus to operate. The Casios were a lot more affordable and really became part of mainstream culture. It's been forever immortalized in celluloid by, of course, Marty McFly in Back to the Future. If you've seen my watches and movies, I think it was part two I discussed it. Uh, but not only in, in, in cinema, also in pop culture, there's a very famous cover of the uh, police uh, wrapped around the F your finger album with Sting, of course, wearing a, uh, a Casio. It's, it's funny how it's, it's seen as quite nerdy, but also cool at the same time. So the watch is still available to this day, uh, almost unchanged. We have this fantastic resin material. I've got to say, I do like the feel of resin, and it takes me back to my childhood. Um, there's something about the, the plastic that Casio uses. We have a stainless steel 
uh, case back if we like to focus and as you can see it contains the module 3208 I love the perforations and also this very kind of it's funny it's retro now and then it was considered the high-tech you know, futuristic sci-fi. I mean, it, it makes me think of Blade Runner. It makes me think of Silent Running. It makes me think of all these great, you know, retro sci-fi uh, films. Even to a certain extent, um, Alien as well. So it has two pushers. One is recessed and then one protruding slightly outwards, almost as if it's a crown of a, a normal watch. And you just scroll through the features uh, it, it, it can beep if you if you wish it to. Uh, so we have alarm, uh, dual time, stopwatch, and the main timekeeping with month, day, date uh, as well. If we look at the keypad, it's <laughs> it's funny. They, they, it has these protruding little rubber textured buttons that. Oh, it's just it's immediately recognizable at any angle what it is personally I don't like to use them I, I think they're a little bit finicky and certainly a big negative of this watch is the lack of um, backlight the 80s design makes me think of you know total recall that kind of vision of what the future would be like there's little ridges that the sculpted case that really don't have any use apart from they just look cool it's powered by one CR2016 battery. You also get an hourly signal if you wish. The battery life is an impressive five years. Even with constant operation, the battery life is, is about three years. If you use the, um, the stopwatch, I think a, a, an hour a day, plentiful. And you can remove the screws and replace the battery very easily yourself. It's also a very slender piece, uh, comfortable to wear. It only weighs um, 22 grams. The dimensions are 34 millimeters uh, from side to side. It's 43 millimeters from lug to lug and about 7.7 .7 millimeters tall. The strap tapers beautifully um, and fits most wrists. We also get a little plastic signed buckle and as you can hear, we are joined by the NYPD as, as usual. Personally, I don't remember the, the, them having a signed buckle as a kid, but maybe that's just, um, you know, uh, my memory's mistaken. And oh, no, I think it's the ambulance service today. Anyway, but despite its shortcomings and being extremely dated technologically, at about, um, I think the retail is $24, but you can pick them up for between 15 and 20 bucks, especially on Amazon. It's amazing value. It's still an iconic watch. Um, still practical and still usable, although, you know, nowhere near as perfect as the second piece we're gonna have a look at. And this is my own personal piece. This is the pinnacle of the databank series. Now this is the DBC611. There's also the DB611G, which is um, in gold tone. And as you can see, it's a, it's a whole different kettle of fish. Now this was designed, I think originally released in 1988, although it's um, had a, a few changes, minor, minor alterations. This is the current form. And by the way, Casio are still producing both of these watches to, the, to this day. But this really is the more higher end data bank. In a way, it's the real, well, one of the first um, smart watches. And there's a fantastic article, I'll leave a link down below, do check it out, on the website called The Verge, uh, which I, I, I have to confess I'm not familiar with, but it's really interesting um, look at all kinds of rare and completely forgotten about Casio watches that were the, the, the smart watches of the day and it's funny as as a lot of the traditional watch industry is fearing them a little bit like the quartz crisis not as bad but um, there is a certain snobbiness about smart watches and the same it's this history repeating itself it really is um, so it's a really cool look at some amazingly nerdy, retro, lovable, charming pieces that a lot of them I have not seen before. So do check it out, I'll leave a link down below. So anyway, back to the, the data bank. So this obviously was a little bit of more of a nuanced, more updated, designed for the higher end market. This incredible bracelet is stainless steel. Look at that taper, it does remind me a little bit of 
the kind of Jujan or Seikos. And funny enough, in the original Alien, Sigourney Weaver wore a Casio that was two Casios joined together. And as you see, it's a little bit reminiscent of this with these two separate sections. So we have the keypad, which reminds me a little bit like a console on a, on a Star Trek, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the control room of, a, of the Enterprise or something. Vastly superior screen, a lot more buttons, and as you can imagine, a ton more features. The back is stainless steel and it features module 3228. You can enter 25 phone numbers along with, I think, an eight character name. It has five multifunction alarms, which is quite complex, dual time, astonishingly 13 languages. So it's quite a complex piece. Uh, you scroll through the um, all different modes uh, using the buttons on the side. So you have your data bank there, a calculator. Oh, and by the way, guys, this includes um, an exchange rate calculator, which is incredibly useful. Multifunction alarms, stopwatch, and then back to the beginning. So you have day dates, uh, calendar, all the rest of it. But what this also does have, thankfully, is the backlight. Well, it's not Technically, it's not a backlight, it's just an LED. It doesn't illuminate the whole screen, but you can read the time. So that is handy because this it, it definitely its biggest downfall. So the main case itself, although this is stainless steel, is a resin that's been painted. Now you can get a, a high polished version, I believe. The dimensions are, it's 33 millimeters diameter. It's uh, 42 millimeters from lug to lug and about eight millimeters tall. The weight is only 48 grams, which makes it incredibly comfortable. Also the way it wraps around the contour of your wrist. It's very slender and even more slender towards the keypad section. The keypad does take a little bit of getting used to because it's n you don't have the raised buttons as before, but it's very usable. I love how on the wrist it angles downwards, it's tilted towards the user. It also just looks incredibly cool and complicated. I have to admit I've never used any of the functions apart from the stopwatch. I think being able to store phone numbers is quite useful even though completely <laughs> completely irrelevant by today's standards. What I love about this version, it also has uh, an automatic light switch, so when you angle it, as you see there, it um, triggers the, the light, which is very cool and, and certainly something that its predecessors back in the late 80s, early 90s did not have. It's a very lovable piece um, and I really like it. Unfortunately, I can't find out how long the battery lasts. I have a feeling, just judging by the bigger screen and the more stuff it does, it probably won't be as long lasting as its uh, ancestor there. Accuracy wise, we're looking at plus 15 seconds a month, which is, you know, what, what you'd come to expect. But accuracy, yeah, yeah, it's just a given that these things are deadly accurate. Uh, my favorite feature has to be this incredible bracelet. Now, while it looks a little bit, well, it, it sounds a bit tinny, but it actually, it's rather sturdy. And the way it has, it moves, it has a wonderful fluidity to it. And the most outstanding feature has to be the sizing system, this ingenious little clasp. So if I bring in my spring bottle, I'll just quickly demonstrate, just pop that up and then slide it across to your desired uh, length of, of, of strap and you can get the perfect fit and you just snap it back. It makes it incredibly comfortable and something I must note, straps or I mean bracelets like this tend to pull hairs. This does not which is just fantastic. The price do vary. I, I believe they're a smidgen under $50. I actually paid more for this. Uh, the price has recently gone down. Casio continues to, to churn them out. It's a very lovable piece. It certainly has a charm, maybe a Marmite effect. Um, not so much a cinematic icon as its predecessor, but definitely the pinnacle of the data banks in terms of functionality, value for money, um, everything it, it did. You know, it, it was the 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 last uh, great generation of its of you know now a, a, a redundant um, age of technology, so to speak. So let's move on to another hugely iconic watch. It's no surprise we had to uh, include it in today's video. 
Uh, probably one of the greatest iconic watches of all time. It is the Casio F91W. Now, I'm a huge fan of this watch. I owned one when I was a kid growing up in South London. I thought I was the absolute business. And I think, um, legend has it, I swapped it for some micro machines in the playground. And I think I definitely got the better, <laughs> the better deal. Introduced in 1991. Uh, it's popular really for its simplicity, its reliability, uh, it's a cinematic and cultural icon, it's clean design uh, that has remained completely unchanged for well over 20 years. It's also available in a ton of variants which we'll take a look at in a while. It has a one hundredth of a second stopwatch that can count up to 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Uh, it's also split time, so it has a lap function, so technically it's a rattrapant as well, rattrapante if you want to be Italian about it. It has an hourly beep, um, single alarm that lasts 20 seconds, automatic calendar, 12 hour and 24 hour formats. It also does uh, feature a green LED backlight for uh, illumination in low light. And it's reported to be the accuracy of about plus 30 seconds a month, which is, you know, pretty good considering it's $10 price tag. The dimensions are about 37 millimeters by 33. It's 8.5 millimeters thick. Where it's incredibly similar to the first data bank the, that we took a look at. His weight is a very diminutive, 22 grams as the module 393 inside incredibly it, the battery one single battery lasts for a 10 years which is just incredible its water resistance is stated at 30 meters and they do say oh you cannot go into water etc but i know from personal experience i certainly went swimming with one on uh, as a child and it was absolutely fine i know many that do including adults its ultimate legacy it has to be durability it's known for being durable so it pops up in cinema in you know fashion constantly it never ends it's also been adopted by the hipsters uh, the fashionistas but also just people that want a fantastic reliable unpretentious uh, wristwatch however they were used as detonation devices in bombs uh, specifically ieds and uh, for a while it was and i'm quoting here i'm quoting um, various intelligence organizations it was seen as a sign of al-qaeda it was a contributing factor to the the continued detention of prisoners by analysis stationed at Guantanamo Bay. Briefing documents used to train staff in assessing the threat level of new detainees advised that um, possession of an F-91W suggests that the wearer has been trained in bomb making by Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. Uh, United States military intelligence officials uh, identified the F-91W as the the, uh, the watch that terrorists used to construct time bombs. Uh, this popped up in various reports that were leaked to newspapers uh, throughout the world. It's very sad that its ultimate um, strength is also has been used for uh, such barbaric acts of evil. It hasn't s diminished or deterred the popularity of, of this watch and it still has a cult following by the good guys and the bad guys and a healthy amount of uh, variations including the F91WC which had neon colors, oranges, blues, greens, pinks, beiges uh, beiges, is that a word? Sorry, beige. I think beige is the plural. And of course, yellow. Its success has also brought about um, imitation of fakes, which is really surprising. One way to tell is if you hold down the single button on the right, I'll demonstrate for you now. If you hold it down, it'll pop up Casio. There you go. Very, very cool. Fakes do not do that. So that's the, um, the genuine article. So it's instantly recognizable by its three button uh, or three pusher setup. We have stainless steel case back and of course, a resin case. Now this is a, another one I've bought and I consider them an essential. I, I just can't, I mean for $10 it's a harmless fun. It really is. And I do enjoy them. I, I, I wear them a lot. In fact, my wife has taken to them as well. This is hers. Um, she's put it on a military nature strap. Very, very fun. Um, in fact, it's uh, <laughs> ironic that the strap costs more than the watch. Uh, so yeah, very, yeah, it's quite funny, but um, very cool indeed. That's her workout watch. That case that is just so lovable, these angles with those rounded edges, 
that little hint of blue, that, that pop of uh, red with the WR there, it's, it's, God, it just takes me back to childhood. And I think, uh, actually, that brings me on to the next um, iconic watch. And this is the A158W, which is essentially the same watch, only with a stainless steel bracelet and a, uh, I think this is chrome-plated, or it might be resin with, with uh, chrome on the top. It's not stainless steel, you can tell. So essentially all this is is a, um, a, a chromed out version of the F91W. This is priced a little bit more, I think about $5 or $10 more. Same module inside. Uh, the only difference is the, the, the change in material. You can get, and this again, this is my wife's one, the uh, gold one. Uh, unfortunately, the gold, if you see, where is it? You see, see here, it's starting to come off a little bit. Um, she does wear this a lot, so we have a slightly different display, I guess, or face of the watch, but pretty much the same. Again, we have that easy to adjust sizing system, which is very, very comfortable. But this has been made iconic in its own right, uh, especially if you've seen the amazing comedy, which I highly recommend to check out. And I will be including it in part three of Watches and Movies, which is coming soon. And that's plane, trains and automobiles with the late, great John Candy, famous scene where he goes, I've got two dollars and a Casio. He puts it on his, on a, and a Casio, there you go. <laughs> and a Casio. Oh, it's it's hilarious film. It's uh, with Steve Martin as well. And it's just a great um, double act, them two together. And also it's been adopted more recently by the hipsters. Same dimensions as before. Exactly the same size, but obviously the weight difference. We're looking at... 48 grams for this rather than the 22 for the resin version more than twice the weight but you know these are still very light compared to most timepieces fun lovable retro stylish classic cool and also they perform they perform and deliver i mean what more could you want incredible value for money right moving on to the next one the last iconic watch and it has to be a g-shock and i think in my opinion this is the best g-shock was well, certainly the best one you could find under 50 dollars so this this is the DW5600E-1V. As you can tell, I mean, I, I've taken it off the strap. I've put it on a um, NATO. This NATO was intended for my SKX, but uh, because of the um, PVD hardware, I, I matched it with this. I'm using adapters from J&K. Shout out to my good friends, J&K. You can f pick these up. I'll, I'll put a link. You can pick these up on eBay for about 12 bucks. So yeah, it did end up costing more than $50 in total. But the watch itself, I think, is about $38 uh, on Amazon Prime. So the G-Shock, a uh, hugely, hugely important watch for Casio. It spawned into a whole kind of sub-brand of its own. They were first released in 1983, so 34 years ago now. Now, I've discussed the history of G-Shock before, but it's very important just to go over it again. They were invented by Casio engineer Kikuo Aibe, and legend has it he had a, an old watch that belonged, I'm not sure if it's to his grandfather or to his father, but he dropped it, it broke, he was obviously heartbroken, and then dawned on him the idea of making something shock resistant. Um, so he came up with this unique case that had 10 layers protecting the quartz timekeeping module inside, including all kinds of uh, rubber and, and, and steel and etc. So the module was kind of floating in this um, padded out case, which obviously makes it a little bit larger. Now the G-Shocks have since exploded into many, many uh, different lines. You've got the Master of G, you've got the Frogman, the Golfman, the Mudman, the Riseman, the Rangeman with full ABC uh, altimeter barometer compass functions. I mean, it, it never ends. This I seem to discover a different G-Shock every week and I'm always lasting after them. Uh, probably the most faithful, I would say, is the GW5000 and the GW M5610, which aesthetically they do look very, very much like the original. Case on this one that I bought is pretty much exactly the same. This is battery powered, so we don't have any of the fancy solar power or atomic keep timekeeping. It doesn't receive any signals, but we do get a very faithful uh, G-Shock close to the original. So in terms of functions, it's the same as any G-Shock. You scroll through 
the mode button, you've got alarm, uh, countdown, stopwatch, and then your main time. Slightly more recessed button at the top left uh, for adjust. And you know, it's the same setup we've seen a thousand times before. I love its uh, non-glossy finish. Uh, and I think without the red, it's, it's even more uh, subdued. We do, of course, we get a backlight, very nice and bright and green, what they call a luminator uh, backlight. So the module is the 3229. Its accuracy is plus 15 uh, seconds a month, although you, you probably um, get even better results from it. It also is powered remarkably by the same battery as pretty much all of these, which is the CR20116. The battery life on this is, and probably its only negative, is about two years. And if you use the backlight frequently, it's gonna even shorten that, uh, although it is easy to replace with the um, screwed in uh, case back. At its price, it's, it's very difficult to beat. You've got day date, all the rest of it. Um, your standard, standard affair. So what has made this watch iconic? Well, it's part of a, a family of, of G-Shocks, of the, of the first G-Shocks. Uh, any G-Shock with DW or, or, or this particular case and look is, is from a lineage of, of G-Shocks that is revolutionary and important to horological history. If you are an active person, the G-Shock is undoubtedly the ultimate beta watch. You just can't beat them, you really can't. They've been worn in space, they've been worn by pretty much every armed force internationally. And of course, in the movies too. I mean, the, the, the amount of movies that the, the DW family of G-Shock watches has been in i i wouldn't even know where to begin guys do um, submit your favorite in the comments i'd like to hear some suggestions maybe if i get enough of them i'll include it in uh, watches and movies part three despite its bulkier case weighs only 54 grams it's incredibly comfortable and i i do love the the 56 w because in my opinion some of the later g-shocks just got too big too exaggerated i think it's acceptable that g-shocks wear a little larger, it's, you know, th th there's a reason there. I think without the negative display, also certainly a lot more legible. I have to have a G-Shock. I can't have a watch collection without a G-Shock and I, I recommend them for anybody, um, no matter what you're doing. The water resistance is a staggering 660 feet, but it goes without saying, I, I think these have it all. They have the history, they have the innovation, they have the mainstream pop culture, appeal and popularity but also they are incredible value for money but beyond the recent revivalist uh, trends uh, and kind of nostalgia for 80s and 90s very much in vogue right now and i still think they will look good as they do now as they will do in the future so anyway guys let me know your thoughts queries comments opinions and especially your favorite casios under 50 dollars in the comments below thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.